morning to you on this Sunday morning. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God I have for you today is from Psalm 121, the first two verses. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we lift our eyes to you today. And we pray that you would open our hearts and minds to receive your word. We believe that your word is truth. We also believe that your word that goes forth from your mouth shall not return to you empty. It shall achieve the purpose for which you sent it. May your word be comforting to us today. May it strengthen us and draw us closer to you. We ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, have you ever found yourself in a position where you cry out, Who can help me? Where will my help come from? Often in life we find ourselves in situations where we simply don't know where to turn. We get frustrated. People are not able to help us, they're not able to solve our problem. And you really do call out, where shall my help come from? Some of these situations can be very serious. Others are just downright annoying. And what they tell us is that people can't always solve our problems. One that was just recently in our lives that was quite annoying was that we decided to change telephone companies. Linda had been looking at the company that we had and looking at another company and comparing the plans, the programs, and the pricing. And we decided to switch telcos for our mobile phones. The new company said that they would contact the old company to port across the numbers because we wanted to keep our old telephone numbers that we wouldn't have to do anything, just give them all the details. Now, Linda organized all of that. Unfortunately, she took an old bill out of the filing cabinet to give them the number, our account number, for our old telephone company. What she didn't know was that a couple of years ago they had changed our account number. I hadn't thrown out the old bills, and so the account number that she gave to the new company was the wrong one. Our new SIM cards came in the mail. I put them into the telephones, went through the activation process, and they didn't work. So I rang up the new company and I said, what's going on? They looked into it and soon we discovered the problem was that we had given them the wrong account number for our old company so they weren't able to port across the telephone number. I gave them the correct number and they said, well, your phones will be working within 24 to 48 hours. Mine started working within 24 hours and that was great. Linda's wasn't working. So I decided to ring them again to find out what's happening. I was put on hold for approximately an hour, had to listen to some fairly horrible music when eventually I got to speak to somebody. It turns out that my one had worked, but somehow the order for Linda's one had got stuck in the system somewhere, and they were looking into what they could do. Unfortunately, they didn't seem to be able to help. They just said, well, wait another 24 to 48 hours, and then try again. If it doesn't work, ring us. So, of course, it didn't work. We rang again and again, and to cut a long story short, it took approximately two weeks to get the problem fixed 
because all they could tell us was, yes, the order's gone in, it's got stuck in the system, we can't do anything about it up until uh, it bounces back and then we can reset it and do it again. It was a very, very frustrating process, to say the least. There were many times when you just throw up your hands in despair and you call out, who can help me? Nobody could. It's not that they didn't want to, they simply couldn't. And as I reflected upon that, I thought of Psalm 121, where the psalmist is obviously in need of help and he's looking around, he looks at the mountains around Jerusalem and he says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He knew very well that there's one place you can turn where you're never going to have any difficulties in getting an answer, and that is to God. He always has the answer. With God, things don't get stuck in the system. There's no run around. There's no problems. When we lift up that beautiful royal telephone, as somebody once dubbed it, the telephone of prayer, God himself answers. And the good thing is he already knows what we're going to ask him and he has the solution at hand. We don't have to, when we get on the royal telephone, we don't have to wait on hold and listen to music. We don't get connected to a department that's not able to solve our problem that says, no, you need such and such a department. Then you get switched over and they say, no, you need such and such a department. And things never get sorted out. That never happens on the royal telephone. It never happens when we call God. We read in Psalm 50, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honour me. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will rescue you and you will honour me. God wants to help us. He wants us to call upon his name. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The psalmist knew from experience that God is able to help. We can call upon God at any time knowing he is there and knowing that he has the answer for us. We know that his hand is never short. He is able to provide for all of our needs. Just going back to our telephone thing for a moment, what I want to stress is that it's not that they didn't want to help us. The problem was that they were not able to. All of the people that I spoke with and all of the people that Linda spoke with were very polite, were very willing and wanting to help, but they just kept saying, we're sorry, but it's stuck in the system and there's nothing that we can do. And that was the problem. In one circumstance, one of my phone calls, I asked, can I speak to somebody with a bit more authority? Can I speak to one of the managers? I did get put through, but unfortunately got the same reply, it's stuck in the system. There's nothing I can do. Then I thought about it when we lift up the royal telephone and we call God through Jesus. We have the highest authority in the whole universe and he is able to help. God has never come across a problem that he doesn't have an answer for. You see, because God knows all things, he's all powerful, he's ever present. There's nothing that he doesn't know. He created everything. Nothing surprises God. 
Things surprise us. Nothing ever takes God by surprise. We can pray, we can turn to him whenever we need to, knowing that he is always there and he's able to help. One of the things that really annoys me is when you ring some department, be it a telephone company, be it a government department, be it an insurance company, the first thing that happens is you get an automated answer that says your call is very important to us. At the moment we're experiencing a, a greater volume of calls than normal. Uh, your wait time shall be very often something like 40 minutes. Your call is important to us. Please don't hang up. We'll be with you as soon as we can. Well, you sit there and you listen to the music and after a while it says you are number 30 in the queue. And then after about 35 minutes, you are number three in the queue and you think, oh, great, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. And suddenly you hear beep, beep, beep. The line has fallen out. That's the moment when you pull out your hair in despair and you say, who can help me? Who can help me? You know, never happens with God. Never happens with heaven. God says to each one of us, your prayer is important to me. I am here. I'm listening. I have the answer for you because I love you. You see, that's the bottom line. God loves us so very much. He loves us so much that he gave us his only son, Jesus, to die upon the cross for us. The good news is, for God so loved the world, for God so loved you, that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have eternal life. God loves us so much. He gave us Jesus. The Apostle Paul says, what shall we say about this? If God is for us, who shall be against us? He who did not spare his own Son, how will he not also freely give us all things? Paul puts it so wonderfully. If God didn't withhold Jesus, didn't withhold his son, will he not take care of everything else? The answer is, yes, he will, because he loves us. Over all things, above all things, God is love. And God wants the best for his children. He is a good and a loving and a wise father. He knows exactly what we need. And you know, the other thing that is really wonderful is that God is always available. He's always awake. He's always watching over us. Night and day. We need to listen to the rest of this psalm. I'll start from the beginning and read the whole thing. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. What a beautiful psalm this is. I find it so comforting. And I often reflect upon these words. I find it comforting that God neither slumbers nor sleeps. I find it comforting to know that when I'm asleep, he's still awake. I don't know about you, but sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety, with worries, with fears, with doubts. Maybe I've had a bad dream or gone to bed thinking about something and it visits me in the middle of the night. And I wake up with these anxious thoughts and then I turn to God and I say, well, you're not asleep. 
Lord, I call upon you. I know that you have the answer. And it always gives me peace. And I settle down and I go back to sleep again. You see, there's not a moment when God is not with us. There's not a moment when we're alone. There's not a moment when he won't be available for us. C.S. Lewis put it so beautifully, I came across this quote last week. God has infinite attention, infinite leisure to spare for each one of us. He doesn't have to take us in the line. You are as much alone with him as if you were the only thing he ever created. You are as much alone with him as if you were the only thing he created. Isn't that a deep and a beautiful thought? God has so much love for you, so much time for you, that when you call upon him, even though he is running the whole universe, you can be alone with him and have his absolute attention. I just find that mind-boggling. But it's true. Only God can do that. You are so precious to him. When you call upon him, you get his complete attention. When you speak to him, he listens. And he says, child, I love you. I love you. Only God can love like that. Only God can help us to that extent. That's why the psalmist wrote, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made the heaven and the earth. Let me encourage you today to lift your eyes up to God. Bring every care, every need, every worry, every thanksgiving, every word of praise. Bring yourself to him and you will find he is there. He said, he comes to me, whoever comes to me, I will never reject. God will never reject you if you come to him in faith. He will never let you down. He has the answer. He is everything you need. May God bless you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much today as we have heard about how much you love each one of us. Thank you for sending Jesus to die upon the cross, to shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, that we may be reconciled to you, that we may become your children, and with that inheritors of eternal life. Thank you for loving us so very much. Thank you, Lord, that we can call upon you day and night we can call upon you wherever we are, whatever circumstance, knowing that you hear us, knowing that we have your absolute attention, knowing that we have your absolute love. Lord, it just blows us away when we think about it. Please forgive us for not always trusting you. Please forgive us our disobedience, our rebellion. Lord, we pray that you would give us a soft heart today. A heart that receives your love, that treasures it, and then that passes it on to others. Shape us, mould us, renew us. As David once said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Put a new and right spirit within me. Lord, that's our prayer. 
Thank you for loving us so very much. We do love you. And our desire, Lord, is to grow in you. Thank you for your word, which comforts us, which strengthens us. Lord, in these difficult times, we turn to you. We don't know what to do, where to go. But we trust in you. And we pray that you would take our hand, Lord, that you would lead us and guide us. Father, we look out over a sick and dying world. And we cry, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. We pray for an end to this coronavirus, the rapid spread of it. We pray, Lord, for a vaccine. We pray for it to stop. We pray, Lord, for the sick, the dying, for those who are grieving. Lord, we pray for those who are on the front lines, who are caring, whose lone lives are in danger. Protect them and help them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, have mercy. As your word directs, we pray for our leaders. We pray, Lord, that you would give them wisdom and understanding. Help them to make the right decisions. We pray for us as people, Lord, that we would obey our governments and do the right thing. Help us to do the loving thing, to look to others, to love as you have loved us. Father God, we thank you for all the promises in your word. You say, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. We draw near to you right now. Lord, and we want to lay our head upon your bosom. We want to be hugged by you. We want to be held by you, Lord. We want to be used by you. We pray for someone who doesn't know you yet, that you would open their hearts. Lord, that they would hear that you stand and knock at the door and that they would open the door and let you in. In your mercy, Lord, grant some lost soul today a true and living faith and trust in you. There's so many things that we would lift before you in prayer. But sometimes we find it difficult to find the words. But we thank you that you've given us some words. And we pray those right now. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you his peace. Amen. As we close today, I'd just like to remind you, God loves you. You are never alone. Call upon him. He will be there. He is there. God bless you.